Hey and welcome to another video. In this tutorial I will show you how to create metabolos inside Photoshop without any kind of special plugin. So what are really the metabolos? If I open this Wikipedia page you can see that the metabolos are just two or more balls and when they get close to each other they kind of connect in a very smooth natural way. So I really like this effect. Here is a random link from the internet. It's kind of more intuitive to see when I move this circle around it kind of connects with the other circles and here is one more example of the 3D uh, metabolos I can change the material as well we will not get anything close to this one in our tutorial but we will at least try to do something like this inside Photoshop so let's jump to Photoshop and get started inside Photoshop I will create a new document 800 by 480 should be enough and what we need to do is to measure a distance from a certain point in a space to any other point. So we will start maybe with a circle like this. And now we need to measure a distance from this circle to any other point. So the distance will be like a gradient and we can simulate it by uh, the either drop shadow effect or the outer glow effect. And we will probably use the outer glow effect. We will set the size as big as possible and the 250 pixels is actually the biggest value which is uh, allowed inside Photoshop and we will keep the contour to be linear for now uh, color to black and blending mode to normal should be fine you will notice that uh, there are some imperfections inside this outer glow effect when I set the spread to be a really big value you will start seeing those edges and even if I set it to zero there are some like light streaks going on but should be probably fine for now so we have one metabol, one point with the distance to any other points. We need more, so I will duplicate this layer. And now we need to decide that anything below a certain value will be black and anything above a certain value will be white. So we will do this with the threshold effect. And immediately you can see that we have some kind of connecting go, you know, going on. We can lower the value a little bit and try to move one of the circles around. And if I move this ellipse, you can see that it's kind of connecting, but it's not looking very nice. The connection is kind of harsh. That's one point. The other thing is it's not curved as we expect it to be. The reason for this is because right now we are measuring the distance as a linear function. So is it, it is full black in here it is full white in here and in between you know it's maybe 50% of gray 75% of gray you get the point we need to do this distance measurement in a different way we need to apply a function 1 divided by x and I just opened the 1 divided by x graph on Wikipedia and you can see that this the values is uh, 1 for, for x is 1 y is one as well but then it goes down quite a bit and it stays around the zero for a while there are very small values when you go to bigger numbers currently we are using a linear interpolation so if I draw the inter linear interpolation it will look like this we need to somehow change the curve to be more bended like this so let's jump back to Photoshop and try to simulate this and we will simulate it by opening the outer glow effect properties and trying to set the diff uh, different contour so right now it's input 0 output 0 input 100 output 100 as well we need to keep those two values but in between we need to bend it like this and we already need to avoid this flat line on the bottom because it means we will get no values in here we still want to get some values so we need to bend it as much as possible while keeping this raising all the time so i'll quickly play with those two points you can probably add more points if you want to basically get as much as to the right side in here but not touching the bottom in here okay something like this should be probably fine so we will delete the old ellipse and instead duplicate this one one more time and run the threshold again and now when we get those ellipses close to each other you can see much nicer connection I will probably turn off those extras so we don't have those lines showing on and really when we move those two circles close to each other we can see a very nice connection now the thing is we have this harsh outline just being black, uh, black or white because we are using the threshold we can probably use a different function like the levels to get 
at least a little bit of anti-aliasing. So we apply the levels maybe going from 81, 89, sorry, and the right would be very close to 89, so maybe 91, 92. And we get a little bit of anti-aliasing going on around the edges. We still see some noise or imperfections around the edges. That's because we are using 8 bits per channel, so 256 possible values. And we are dealing with a lot of small values, adding them together, so we get we don't have enough information. We can solve this by switching to more bits per channel. Inside image you can switch to 16 bits per channel. And you can see we have more details around the edges. What we can do is we can have as many metaballs as we like. You can see we have those edges, that's because the outer glow effect is not very precise. Another thing we can do is to have some, add some colors. We can add a, maybe a gradient map and select some gradient in from here, you know, crazy rainbow or maybe something more subtle like this. And if we move it here, we only have two colors because the levels are giving us only two colors. But if we change the opacity of levels to maybe 50%, you will see we can still get this strong outline while it looks like it's glowing a little bit. Okay, and I think that should be it for today's tutorial. We have kind of meta balls. They are meta balls, but the outer glow effect is not very precise, so those are near really true balls. But it works, and you get the point. Maybe next time we can use a different method to get more accurate results. And that's it. Thank you for watching.